With plate tectonics, there is a long way we've come since the theory became sort of widely accepted about 50 years ago. There's so much we still don't know. And it's ideal as a researcher going into a field where there's a lot of unanswered questions. Earth is over 4 billion years old. It's a long way back to look at. We're only seeing a very tiny portion of Earth's history. So extrapolating what we find out today to the deep time past, it's a very big task. It's a bit like detective work. You pick on these clues and if you know how to read the Earth and find these clues, you can tell a lot about how Earth has evolved. Today, the Earth's lithosphere, which is the outer layer and is formed by the crust and the top part of the mantle, is broken into a number of tectonic plates and those plates move continuously. And that's what, what we uh, call plate tectonic theory, tells us about how that happens. Originally, when Earth formed, it would have been too hot to have a crust, it would have been too hot to have plates. As it cooled down, it, the outside layer would have solidified, but it wouldn't have been broken into plates. Exactly when it did break into pieces, exactly how that happened, we're not sure. The suggestion is that subduction, or the process of a plate sinking into the mantle, was what initiated it, because today we think that subduction plays a big role for plate tectonics. But exactly how or when, um, we just simply don't know. For reconstructing plate motions, the oceans themselves are our main source of information. At mid-ocean ridges, so places where two plates are separating, new oceanic lithosphere is forming. So a mid-ocean ridge essentially is a very long chain of volcanoes. And the mantle is coming to the surface and those magma is coming to the sea floor in contact with seawater, solidifying. And when it does that, the magnetic minerals in those rocks will align themselves with the magnetic field of Earth. Back through time, our magnetic field has flipped at uneven intervals. And the ocean floor and the rocks forming on the ocean floor are recording these flips in polarity. We can look at the ocean floor and record the signals and essentially date the ocean floor and know how old it is in different places. And you can use those stripes to build plate reconstructions, so to essentially bring continents back together, uh, back through time. There is a big connection between plate tectonics and life. The main way in which plate tectonics may have enabled Earth as a suitable environment for life to appear and to evolve as quickly as it has done is that plate tectonics controls the climate in many ways. One of the ways is that it controls the carbon cycle, so how carbon is exchanged between the outside and the inside of Earth. The formation and the destruction of oceans and how oceans connect to other oceans and how water circulates is the Earth's thermostat. It controls the distribution of heat, it also uh, controls the distribution of nutrients, which are key for life. So there are suggestions that life appeared on Earth before plate tectonics was underway. But perhaps the difference between Earth and other planets is that whilst plate tectonics may not be a requirement for life to appear in the first place, it's likely that it's a requirement for life to be maintained and to diversify and to grow as quickly as it did.